The following program contains language which some viewers may find offensive. It's a classic. We change the manager during the season and give a new manager a group of players that aren't this. The classic mistake that any owner makes. And yeah, here we go. And you pay for that. You pay for that at the end of the season. Sarsevic, he's done well now to pick out the pass for Doyle. And it's the home side in front. And suddenly there's a mountain to climb for Richie Wellens. When you've made decisions like we made, which causes a massive disruption to the club, obviously a new manager coming in. The games at the moment were up and down, were inconsistent, and it's not unexpected. Uh, Paul, and let's be honest, it was really poor. Well, that's a poor touch! And out of nowhere, Bolton have a second goal! But sometimes, if you have a poor performance like that, it highlights a lot. A first defeat for Richie Wellens in his first league game in charge. We've got to get the best out of the players we've got, that's it. You could easily make three or four or five changes, but we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. If we would have won the game 1-0, but still play the same way, people go, it's a good result, and you end up brushing a lot of stuff under the carpet. It's probably best that it happened in the first game. There's definitely improvement in these players, but the next two or three weeks will tell me a lot about them. I think you just need to start trusting me. You might be playing this back to me at the end of the season, looking really stupid. Early January, mid-January, we're going to go on a winning run of three, four, five, six matches, which takes us right up into that top three. That's what I want. That's what I expect from this group of players and the manager. Seven years ago, five former Manchester United players took over non-league Salford City. The club is growing faster than anyone can handle. Success soon followed. After four promotions in six seasons, the club reached the Football League for the first time in their history. We have an ambition to get accelerated promotions up to the Championship as quickly as possible. We've got to start winning games. But after missing out on another promotion, <laughs> the club are more desperate than ever to rise through the ranks. The risk of taking this season haven't worked. It's tough. And big decisions in the boardroom. To lose a manager after four months means it's gone badly wrong. Lead to big changes in the dugout. It's someone that's best for the job. What are you doing with the players today, Paul? Playing football. You've got to go again now, we need more. I'm going to do my job now. We want gun coal. We want that madness. <laughs> it's the most challenging season yet. I will make tough decisions. For Salford City and the class of 92. Inside, inside, Lowy. Inside, that gap there. Good. There you go, Lowy. Full back. Beautiful. New Salford City manager Richie Wellens won League Two the previous season with Swindon Town. Known for his attacking style of football, Wellens is working with his players to change how the team play. Any football manager that takes over any job anywhere, you have to win. But I do want to win, playing a certain way, and that might take a little bit of time. The ball breaks down. You release yourself too slow. He's playing forward. Come on, Lowy. Melis is running. Okay. Whenever you have a manager that has been at the club for a couple of years, he is invariably bought players in to recruit to his style. So first of all, you give the players that are already at the club, an opportunity to, to buy into what you want to do and the way you want to go. And I think that my way is enjoyable. So if they get it right, it is actually an enjoyable way to work hard and to play football. What is your style? I like to be quite adaptable. In general, I like to play good football. I like to counter-attack and play quick football. I don't enjoy watching people take four or five touches when they can take one or two and they can do it quickly. I like to press from the front, I like to win the ball high up the pitch. But again, all that takes time. You need athletic players, people that can cover the ground, and people that can make quick decisions, and people that make the right decisions. I want each individual to get up to their opponent, to stop them from playing, to get in the face, to be aggressive towards them. And then when they get the ball, go and enjoy it, and don't give it back to the opponents very easily. I think football is quite simple, like that. but ultimately your job's on the line because you've got to win football matches. We brought a little bit of science to our recruitment last summer. We sort of looked at the players, didn't we, a lot more. I think we need to bring more to it now. One of the big things about the, the playing philosophy is the, the players on the outside, they have to be skillful. 
You have to have that little bit of skill, that, that imagination, that creativity. Gary Neville, sporting director Chris Casper, and the club's scouting department are planning ahead for next season's recruitment. We need to bring six players in the summer. Which six players get us to the top six in League One? And then that's the League One analysis. And we just, you know, Richie's never managed in League One. He's never seen a League One game. Probably seen, you might have seen two. I haven't seen a League One game. You might have seen some because you've been around watching. But no, no, no one in this club is a, is a specialist in League One. There's yeah, definitely yeah. a League One analysis needs to be done. Our players versus League One's yeah, tops. Huh? I, I know. No, but yeah. But <laughs> no, remember no, last we got, time we got, we got, we got out of the National League last time into League Two. So we we we've not done analysis of the league, and we yeah. ended up where we were eleventh. Yeah. We've got to we've got to plan for an analysis of League One. We know League Two now. We've got it. We, we know what it is. We know we don't know how to win in it yet, but we know what it is. League One, we haven't got a clue. This does feel like the last season where I feel like we have to go up because we've got an advantage on budget, but at this moment in time, it's not really bearing its fruit. But yeah, I do feel like there's a bit of panic this year, a bit of pressure. We need to get to League One, but the only way to do that really is by making considered long-term and good decisions, not just by making short-term decisions. We just get rid of that player, bring that player in. That's not the model we wanted. Now it's the time to use the football skills that we have to become a fantastic football club that we originally wanted. It's not a changing room, is it? No, it's just the overspill for the COVID uh, regs. So we're using this as the main changing room, and then we've got the original changing rooms that spill over. Get used to it now with the COVID, with the Rona. Salford are ninth in the league and are looking for their first away win since October. I've got a lot of fans, haven't they? Mm. Nice to have them back. Not when you're not getting your own fans here. Come on, be aggressive. Every time we clear a ball, we get up. OK? We get up until someone gets up. And it looks like you can play for us. Let's go, let's go, boys. Come up against Salford City for the first time in the EFL. Richie Wellens has his side in a good position in the table as we enter a very congested month of action. and forward here. Lifted by Henderson! Couldn't direct it on target. The goal is here at the Progression Solicitor Stadium. The race header doesn't go very far! Spectacular effort! Are we going to get a goal in this one? There have been chances at either end. Salford attacking. Oh, that's gone in. Ashley Hunter, the goal scorer. Who knows whether it was intended? It doesn't really matter. Richie Wellens' side have the advantage. Barrow are 21st in the table coming into this one. Salford heading towards the playoff positions in ninth, but they're on the back foot here. And a chance for Quigley. Totally misused. Hope fans sense a goal maybe the other way. It might be here. Maybe a last chance here now for Barrow. Counter, well and truly on. Can they finish it up here? It's Henderson. Square ball. Oh, a real miscue. Totally messed things up. But that's it, and Salford get the point. It is finished here. Barrow nil, Salford City one. All right, well done, well done. Yeah, we've got a good group of players. Last that showing it consistently. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on, boys. Hey, what a great result, considering we had no midfield, though. No, really good. We'd have lost that a few weeks ago, wouldn't we? I thought, do you want to look at what year everyone's was up, contracts and stuff? Aye, you got a look at that, yeah. Richie Wellens and club chairman Karen Baird meet to discuss the transfer budget with the January window approaching. 
I can't believe somebody's selling his even their parents' money's in that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Massive. Absolutely. I won't imagine it'd be uh, no He's never I don't I won't imagine it'd be a lead to budget like this. Unlike previous seasons, financial pressures off the pitch are having an impact on what Sofa can do when the window opens. In the past, we've been accused of buying leagues, and to be fair, we did for a lot of it, but it, the world's massively changed. Everyone thinks we've got wealthy owners, but all the wealthy owners have got businesses that have been damaged by COVID. No one is spending money unnecessarily. Everyone is tightening the purse strings. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. With no money to spend, the club relies on its contacts to get young loan players in from bigger clubs. My apologies. Sorry, Dish. No, it's all right, mate. One loan signing that is already at Salford is Manchester United's young centre-back, Deshaun Bernard. How's it all going? It's been good. You know, I've been with the men's football now. to step up for me to show what I've got against uh, the older ones, yeah. In uh, League Two, it's more... Uh, long balls, defend your box. It helps you learn like how to dig in late in games because there's loads of balls going to be coming to the box. How long are you at Salford for? At the moment, it's just till January, but you never know. Sean Bernard, done really well since he's gone in at centre-back, on the front foot, steps in front, pushes us up a little bit, makes us more aggressive. I'd like to sign him full-time. Don't go to the United, they'll let him go, but I'd love to bring him into the club full-time because he's the type of player we need. You know, young, hungry, wants to develop a career for himself. We've got him till January, but we've asked if he'll stay on to the end of the season. And I think if he's playing, he'd be silly to go and leave. Would it be a problem if he didn't? Yeah, I think it'd be a big problem. It's a conversation we need to start having in the next week or two. Obviously, now we're in sort of getting towards mid December, and we need to start having that conversation. I've done a soccer AM today with Noel Gallagher and Jamie Carragher, Scouser and a City fan. Couldn't be worse. If Salford get beat tonight, i just finish the day off. Playing Newport tonight, we need a big win. We need a big win. We can't win a big game. I, I don't think we've beaten a good side yet, and that's not good enough. Things are rolling along nicely for Salford under the stewardship of Richie Welland since he took over the job in early November. The Amis have lost just one of their last five and are on the cusp of a playoff spot with a game in hand. However, they face the toughest test of all in Top Dogs Newport this evening. to take and it's a brilliant bullet header Tom Clark with his first goal for Salford all delivered into the near post Steps Ian Henderson, and it's a great save from Townsend. Hunter through to James Wilson, it hits the post. Wilmot. Now Shepherd searching for the back post. And the referee has awarded another penalty. Deep into out of time, Josh Sheehan has rescued a point for Newport County. And Salford will feel sickened by that penalty decision. Positive, good performance. Best we've pressed, best we've played. More chances, we front three, Asante, Henderson, Wilson could have had a hat-trick each, so 
really good performance. Obviously, we would have liked to have missed the chances, but referee made a mistake. We've got to live with it, but no, really positive. I think if you if we would have held on and won that, we would have took 13 points from six or seven games. So that's it's a lad doing great. We've had three managers. You know, if we're not in a bad position, we would like to have three or four points more. But um, it is what it is. We've 29 games left. Loads of games. Loads of games. So I'm going to do my job now. Yeah. I've seen on Twitter that they said the penalty was my fault, that I committed it. And I was like, ah. Oh. No, we should have won 100%. We had bare chances. With Deshaun Bernard playing well on loan at Salford, clubs in League One are interested in signing the young defender. <laughs> not too sure yet. Everything's in the air, but I could be extending or. I'm not sure what else yet, so at the moment, I'm just playing at the moment, yeah. You're going to get ruined, Richie. You get f***ed every week. The thing is, I can't complain, because you know the worst area, the worst dugout area in the country, is at which ground? I was. So I can't really complain when we come away. You come up at home, like you need a pair of wellies. Salford are eighth in the league. A win tonight will take them up to fourth and into the playoff places. I think we're in a good place. Just probably one win away from being where we really want to be. We're playing a little bit of catch-up now. We need to win tonight. One of them games that you've got to go through, win your individual battles, fighting and working, rather than playing pretty football, and come out on top. It's a chilly evening at the One Call Stadium where Mansfield Town hosts Salford City in League Two, but there's a burning desire from Yammies to get back on the promotion hunt. I can't quite get there. Slam low. And it's gone in from George Lapsey. One of those shots that shouldn't be going in. He's, he's, he's got to do something that shocks him, hasn't he? Follow another one down. Yeah, it's yeah, it's coming, isn't it? Birch's cross drops into the middle. Reed glances it on, comes down to Bowery. Get off, get off. Now he's need to wake up here. It's been a poor opening half hour and they're paying the price at the moment. Look at him, absolutely taking the piss out of us. Not up for it, well off it. Oh. There is the full time whistle. It's not been a particularly happy new year so far for Salford. To be honest. I didn't see that performance coming in terms of the attitude and, and what have you, but decision making was shocking. Nowhere near good enough. Cases of anxiety in young adults are rising as experts warn of the effects on well being caused by the pandemic. This was a real test with a real family pushing EE full fiber to the limit. Hi. Hi. 
Confirm connection over EE4 fibre in three, two, one. Is that live? No, no, you won't believe it. Wow. This is Cambridge Airport, we are live. Ooh. Video feeds, the data feeds, all of this is real time through your EE router. Zap one Alpha versus Air Suburbia Ops, are so you on frequency? Air Suburbia Ops, this is Zap one Alpha maintaining 3,000 feet, heading 0, 050 0 degrees, Cambridge overhead. Zap one Alpha, runway 23 available for landing. Copy, Zap 1 Alpha. Guys, I've got someone who wants to say hello. Congratulations, everybody. Well done. I can't believe we just landed a plane. I know, right? It's unbelievable. This is broadband that can handle anything. This is full fiber from EE. When Bet365 was created, we had a simple vision. We wanted to connect people to every game that matters. We wanted to build the ultimate sports app. So, we did. Download the app and see for yourself why Bet365 is the world's favourite online betting brand. Please, gamble responsibly. Upgrade to Sky Cinema for just £11 a month and bring the cinema home this Christmas. Wow. Isn't this the best? Christmas. Enjoy the latest blockbusters, oh. the greatest Christmas classics, oh. and new and exclusive Sky original films. We're nearly there. Upgrade now for just £11 a month. Oh. Bring the cinema home this Christmas. Search Sky Cinema. You know that smoky, tasty flavour you get in a Whopper? Yeah. That's not smoke. It is. That's liquid. It's like liquid smoke. No secrets. It's just fire. Burger King. <laughs> Even when Cremont pours itself, we'll always be little on price. Because we're big on a Christmas you can always believe in. Betting can add a little excitement to any sporting event. But only if it's done safely, responsibly, and within our means. Never gamble when angry or feeling low. Set yourself a limit for time, money, or both. No matter what the problem is, gambling is never. Is never. It's never the answer. There is always someone to talk to when you feel gambling is becoming a stress. Check out responsiblegaming.paddypower.com Look on this as a new start for all of us, OK? Do you think you would be afraid if you saw a ghost? We're the first people who haven't run away at the sight of us. You want us to come back with you? What are we even doing here? We're going to change the pattern to change time. Be a good idea if you can just go through the budget and what we need to do, what we, you know, what we're governed by basically for the window. The um, budget's easy. Whatever we get in, we can spend. Right. Go on, and we'll go through these right backs. With the January transfer window open, senior management of the club are meeting to discuss potential players to sign on loan for the rest of the season. Uh, Donald Love is available. Wouldn't take him. Not played enough games. Right. Okay. Cadden, I think you mentioned he might be going to Oxford, yeah. Oxford. We need, whoever comes in his door, needs to be match ready, fit to go, so he's got one day's training and you can throw him in and he's ready. So for the night backs, Richard, are there any that we want to, like, move on? Listen, I know I'm a pain in the ass, aren't I? Whoever we bring in, I have to work with him every single day, look him in the eye, look him in the eye. We're going to make mistakes, 100% we're going to make mistakes, but if we sign 20 players and we get 16 right, only means I've got four wrongs, so I only have to full look at four lads every day who are pissing me off and doing reading, and I'm doing their reading. That's what you can't have. Yeah. At least we know where we are. If I come in here and say, I like him, I like him, I like him, I like him, and we'll take him all, you'd go, me. Yeah. But I ain't doing my job properly then. I, I'd do only just to bring you yeah. the options. But, and this, honestly, lads, this is the most important thing at any football club. It's not coaching the players, it's not... Because if we get good players in, we don't even have to coach them as much. You drip feed information to them, you take it on board quicker if you get good players. So I apologise I'm a pain in the ass, but I'm so conscious that I need to get it right, because this is the most important thing. 
you need players who are used to winning, don't you? And know what it means yeah, to them, I, know what it takes, agree. know that, that yeah. mentality and know these are the demands. You know, you keep talking about getting promoted this season. Yeah. You won't undo a desk yeah. to win. Yeah. And we're not looking for mid-table. We're not thinking we need we need to try to stay up here. We need one winning free and nick a draw here and there. We're trying to win every week. If we think we are good enough to win this league, I don't think we are. That's what we said in your interview. Well, now we And by the way... Don't matter. That's what we said in your interview. We can get that team <laughs> up. But what I'm saying is we've just got to work with what we've got, haven't we? So we're getting two and three out, bring two and three in. We're going to have to make it work somehow. Aren't we? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Do you want room for your shots? Sorry. It's alright, don't worry. But don't worry, it's been seven minutes, this. It's fine, no problem. I was literally on commentary, having an absolute nightmare at Burnley. I was totally distracted. It was terrible, really. What is that? Because you were like... Because my team scored in the 92nd minute and the producer came into my ear at the point where it was a big incident in the game at Burnley and saying Henderson scored. I was like... I was like... I, just, I was all over the place. I was an inexperienced, experienced commentator last night. For the last-minute winner, it's like one of the best feelings you can have. And we've not had too many of those at Salford, to be fair. And that's needs to change. Because that's where you build a spirit and a confidence and a, a feeling in the dressing room. Big moments. Can you show you what we're doing? No. no, no, no. Not us. <laughs> not us. <laughs> not us. <laughs> not us. <laughs> just keep flashing. Keep flashing. Live. Just go. <laughs> <laughs> Got me, Ben? Absolutely. That's the problem. you comfortable with. I, I'm not. <laughs> Uh, Deshaun, we just renewed his deal with Manchester United in the last hour. Yeah. Delighted to. He's settled, he's playing. So it would be a, a wrench for him to leave and we wouldn't be able to replace him like for like. Um, certainly, you know, players who can pass like he can, run like he can, got the physicality that he has, the talent, the ability to read the game. He's a really good player. The ambitions are high and the standards are high and they want nothing but and that's the standards that I strive for as well. So it's glad that we're on the same page and we're all aiming for the same things. Staying here was the right decision and hopefully get promoted at the end of the season. So happy staying, yeah. Are the pitches playable? <laughs> 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 The club have completed their business in the January transfer window by bringing in three players on loan. The three signings that we've got in just gives us a little bit of a different outlook. Tom James will give us quality from right back. Robbie Gotts will give us energy and he can disrupt midfield by making runs off the back of people. So Coops, he can play through lines before somebody gets it and turns and plays the next pass, which allows you to get a chance. So we've got some good athletes, we've got some experience, we've got lads that can fight. And we're just having a little bit of quality now. We could have scored a lot at Scunthorpe the other night. We didn't quite take it, but I'm starting to like what I see in training now. The personnel we've got and the formation we're playing, really start feeling comfortable with what I'm seeing, so hopefully we can start getting four or five wins on the spin. You're a weapon, you aren't you? Hi, Yeah, listen, this game's got no chance. It's, it's rock hard, and all the water's settling on top, so it's going to be flooded in another hour, never mind frozen. Bye, mate, bye-bye. I'm pissed off because we can't get no momentum. It's our training week up as well, doesn't it? Yeah, every other day is a problem. You plan your week, today game's off, now the next week is everything just can't get no rhythm, no momentum. The hardest thing is you can't get to know the players as well. You know, you're not the coach, you're not the You don't want to coach, it's a week travel set bonded. You know, if you're not spending time with them, you don't. You can't ingrain the culture in people if you. In this environment at the minute, you can't really get to know your players. When we're going away trip, we don't, we don't see them. We don't sit, usually you'd, you'd sit and have something to eat and you'd maybe have a chat with one or two separately, privately. Can't do anything like that. So it is tough, but that's why we want the games on, just so we can get some momentum.
With Salford's training ground flooded, the team are having to train on artificial pitches in Manchester. Manager Richie Wellens is working on the team's attacking play. The most difficult thing in coaching is you know as a coach the way that you want to play. It's no good having that way of playing in your head and the player's not really understanding it. So the difficulty is getting the players to understand it and buying into it. It's no good you saying to the player, why do you do here? Why? If you haven't told them and asked them what to do. Ash, going as a second centre forward in between, perfect. When you want to try and play in a certain way, you have to show them, so you have to give them a visual of what you expect. Just go and mark him, show, show. All right, it's so one more pass, good. Beautiful pass. So you're basically playing Saturday, recovery on a Sunday. You've got a game on a Tuesday. This is a lot of work that you would do in the pre-season, really. Willow! Should be there. The ball's travelled 70 yards. That's why you only score 10 a season, score 20. I wouldn't say we're struggling up front. We've got two strikers in Henderson and Wilson that have proven at this level or level above. It's just about making chances for them. Last five minutes is really good. Let's get more rotation with our front players, yeah? It's a mirage. We've got a game on. Can I ask one question? Is this game definitely on? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I was more upset than anybody. I was just going out the door. I even had a shower. I don't like having a shower. I even shower once a week. Tonight, Salford play league leaders Cambridge at home, looking for a win to keep them in the hunt for promotion. So predictions for tonight? Need yeah. a win, didn't it? Need a win. Yeah. Two weeks ago was that uh, could have got second in the league with a minute to go. Yeah. And now you're nine. <sighs> now and to be fair, you're looking over your shoulder that way. Thinking, what's going on? Right. Let's pray. <laughs> It's game on at the Peninsula Stadium where Salford City hosts League Two leaders Cambridge United tonight. For the moments of left Yammies without a game since the end of January, and Richie Wellens side have been eager to get going and put that result right. Henderson putting the pressure on. Nokadine has chosen to try and run it away from Henderson, who's won it back at the top of the area in Henderson. Put Salford ahead, punishing the Cambridge mistake. with a very well-timed challenge. Now here comes Richie Tower the other way. It's a great shot, a great finish. And so from straight up the other end, double the lead. That's it. Go on, go on. Slips the pass into the middle for Henderson, return down the left, and Robbie Gotts makes it 3 0. It's a wonderful, wonderful move. Ian Henderson, Richie Tell, and Robbie Gotts really asserting Salford's dominance. Into low, now Torre. Ball works to the right for Hunter, in behind for Towell. Hunter's low ball into the middle, Henderson, and it's Salford 4, Cambridge 0. And Salford City with a very, very convincing win against league leaders Cambridge United. Salford very deserving of three points. Well, well, well. Things you don't expect. We are the best players just got in the league, just play properly. Different animal there. Oh, All right, let's go. Footballers at any level want an excuse. If you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. So I'm not comfortable without giving all the players all the information that can possibly give. The players need to know exactly what the opposition do. If we get the opposition right and we don't win the game, at least we've given ourselves the best opportunity. All right, morning, lads. Just give us 10 minutes on these. Can you make that picture a bit bigger, John, though? No? Joyce is squinting here. Salford are preparing for a crucial game against promotion rivals Morecambe. A win could take them third in the league. This is a typical goal of theirs. Second ball, put it in there, compete, run off, goal. 
When we clear the ball, can we shift up? Can we have a midfield player just to bop it in there? Other midfield players stay on the outside. Can we fill these gaps? These are too slow. Can we play in to go out? Can we go and step in there a bit so it's not a big diag? OK, no problem, let's go. 90, Good evening, welcome to the Mazuma Stadium where fourth place Morecambe hosts fifth place Salford. Tonight presents Richie Wellington's side with the chance to leap from the shrimps and maybe enter the top three. Square pass into Robbie Gotts has a look up towards goal. Still going here as one minute goes up on the board. Thompson Santa on the right drills a shot. It's underneath Leatherin and Salford City at the end of the first half take the lead. A lead for Yamis to protect. The one that's changed the course of the upper reaches of the Skybet League Two table this evening. The four officials indicated a minimum of five minutes added at the end of the second half. A minimum of five minutes. This game very much in Yami's control. Get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. That'll be a corner for Morecambe. Time whistle. Yes! This one has well and truly been thrown away. Well, Salford boss Richie Wellens, that was very close to the perfect away performance. Really strange feeling. Played quite well and we should win the game. So obviously going in the last two minutes and actually losing the game, it's, it's kind of a numb feeling if I'm being honest. But we should yeah, we should we should we should finish the game off. We should be two or three up and we'll finish the game off. You were just minutes away from moving into third place in the table, Richie. Now you've slipped down to seventh. Mm. Does it feel like a, a big opportunity missed? There's a mental block that's there for us. We, we've got opportunities to win three games on the bounce. We've got opportunities to, to get in the top three. And people keep taking it off us. So we need to put a run together. We keep saying it, but we have to take it now. I'm sick of dropping points against teams that we were quite dominant against. With William Hill Bet Boost, we paid out on average £30 more on a five-fold £10 acre of favourites in most Premier League games last season compared to selected bookmakers. Approved by Odds Checker. The William Hill Acre, your love our value. It's who you play with, William Hill. You know that smoky, tasty flavour you get in a Whopper? Yeah. That's not smoke. It is. That's liquid. It's like liquid smoke. No secrets. It's just fire. Burger King. Home again. Home. No one should be homeless and alone this Christmas. Many people will be experiencing their first Christmas without a home. No one should have to live like this. But you can help change this by donating £29 and six pence today. Crisis at Christmas can be a real turning point. A safe place to stay and a Christmas lunch. 
community and fun, vital support and health care. And every day next year, Crisis will be there offering advice, training and education to give someone a fresh start. It's hard to accept that this Christmas, thousands of people near you and me will be homeless and alone. But you can help change it. Donate £29 and sixpence to help someone take their first steps out of homelessness. Call 0800 999 4080 or search Crisis at Christmas. Thank you. Colin! What have they done to you? Coming, Percy! Oh, oh, look! It's just a chocolatey trifle with little Colin faces. Colin is not to be trifled with. OK, try this. Collection Sticky Toffee Pudding Crown with salted caramel sauce and vanilla custard. Or the vegan plant kitchen melt-in-the-middle chocolate pudding. It's what Colin would have wanted. These are not just desserts. These are M&S desserts. Have you heard the one about the immortal Lord of Dreams? So he gets imprisoned by this cult, right? Right. And he has to cross Earth and Heaven and Hell. Have you heard the one about power couples? In love, friendship and business? With Idris and Sabrina Elba. They're total couple goals. Have you heard the one about how, through the whole of human history, queer life always finds a way? Chopped up to 40% off with the Amazon last minute Christmas deals. So now they can be the party balls. And they have the party season all sewn up, baby. Shop up to 40% off with the Amazon last minute Christmas deals. Following the last-minute defeat to Morecambe, Salford win just one of their next four games and drop to ninth in the table. How do you think your season's gone? Probably a six, seven out of ten. To get promoted, you need to be an eight or nine out of ten. So, just OK at the minute. Just OK. Simply because we, we should be three or four wins extra. We should have nine more points. Luckily, we've still got 15 games left. So there's loads of points to play for. We haven't won three games on the bounce, yet we're still right in amongst it. So I'm hoping that we, we keep believing that we, there is a five or six game winning run in us. If we don't get that five or six game winning run, then more realistic that we'll be in the playoffs rather than the automatics. But, you know, we're doing okay at the moment just to stick in there considering we haven't won three games on the bounce. This weekend, Salford are not playing in the league. Instead, they're off to Wembley for the Papa John's Trophy final, which was postponed from the previous season due to the COVID pandemic. What I see Wembley as now is an opportunity for us to kickstart the final part of our season. We're not winning games, and that's frustrating, incredibly frustrating. You think of all these points that have just been whittled away, drifted away, where I was not being clinical, ruthless. And in terms of Richie, obviously, I know him. He's tenacious, he's determined, he'll be as disappointed as we are. Is Richie under pressure from you? Yeah, he is under pressure. Richie is under pressure from me. I don't think any manager that comes into this club doesn't feel that they're under pressure to succeed. There's nothing here now that's a shock. 
They knew we were here. They knew there was a focus on the club. They knew they had the biggest budget. They know there's an expectancy to go up. And if we don't go up, there's a problem. It's a problem to us. Of course it's a problem. We've got to start getting results. This is the pressure point now, and I'm looking for the players, for the manager to stand up. I feel a bit of an imposter, to be honest. The fact that Graham's got the club to the final, and then you just walk in and take a final. But at the end of the day, I have to be ruthless. We're actually thinking that if we can get a trophy under our belt, it will give us confidence and, and a belief to, to get promotion. Momentum in football is one of the biggest things. Momentum, confidence. If you get them two things going hand in hand, then irrespective of your ability, you start to believe so you can win games. Sometimes you can win games, you can be bang average, but you're just used to winning. And you come in, you win. And I do believe if you win at Wembley and you get a trophy, you can take that forward 100%. Okay, that's the pitch. I'm confident that that will be red. I think we'll dominate the ball. If he's at the level that he can be, okay, I think we'll dominate the ball. I'd give you right leg to play out there, but not just to go and play there, not just to turn up and take part in a nice eight and a nice surface. I'd give you right foot to play and win. Run, pass, everything you do, come here and do it with an urgency and put messages on your tackles, your passes. I think we're a better team than them. I really do, okay? Go out and perform and do yourself justice, okay? Let's go. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on. No holding back there as the challenge was made by Threlkeld and Solbert City are on the approach of McGillivray is forced into action to keep out Wilson. Wilson! Another chance comes and goes for Salford City. Has crept all the way through to Curtis, who could be in here. Polanski getting down to it and making his first big save of the contest. Debutore away from Harness, stands that ball up towards the far post, and McGillan is there again. It's incredible from the Portsmouth keeper. We've had to wait a year for this final, and we will have to wait a little bit longer to crown the winners. We will go to extra time. Throwings, yeah. So many free kicks, anything. If you go wrong, who's going to win it? Yeah. yeah. So can we get our hand on the play and be clever? Get it down the side, get up the pitch. <laughs> Make a way. Confidence. Yeah. Well. yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Come, on, come, on, come, on. come on, come on. 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 Curtis plays it back inside the box, and the reaction of Lucky was brilliant. Marquis tries to get there. Chaos inside the Solvid City box. It's still going on, and somehow Lucky has dropped on the ball. Andrade. Di Sarui. So close. the penalty shootout will decide the 2020 Papa John's final. All about bollocks, isn't it? Right? Here we go then, the penalty shootout. It's Ryan Williams for Portsmouth up against Václav Kladky. Ryan Williams fires over the bar. Incredible. Can Salford City take advantage? And Salford City have the advantage. Curtis, glad he gets to it. Brilliant save. He will not be beaten. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Di 
Giroud away, straight down the middle. Solvid City are firmly in charge in the penalty shootout. Brandon Thomas Asante moves forward. Brilliantly done. They have been clinical. Platt keep keeping the penalty taker waiting. Ragged! They stay alive! Jason Lowe, can he win it for Salford City? Jason Lowe! Does the business! Salford City, a league below, but a cut above today! Thousands will be rising up at home! The proud city of Salford can be proud of this team! It's another day to cherish! Well done. Well done. Some breaking news, and it regards Salford City, who have this afternoon parted company with Richie Wellens. Today's probably the worst day that I had in football. If we don't win games, we won't achieve anything. We could get in the playoffs. There's a hell of a lot of football left to play. You don't let them off. You've got to go again now. We need more. Oh, my God. <laughs>